Uh, I want to just start with by sharing with you that, um, you know, I, uh, I grew up in China in a little village. So they, uh, for example, I'm, I'm thinking about um, myself. I'm, I think I'm a successful professor, but I have to confess I'm a failed peasant. You know, I was, uh, I was grown up to be a peasant and I wasn't good because I did not, uh, I wasn't performing to the expectation of the common core in my village. <laughs> and the common core in my village was to drive the water buffalo. That was, uh, I wasn't good. So, but uh, thankfully I was able to go to school. They had some teachers who comforted me to say, that's okay to fill that common core. You come to school, you can read. And I began to read, and that's how I got out of there. I was so thankful for the teachers to find something else that I can feel good about. That's how, how I started the whole, whole idea. You know? So it's about failure and, and success in life. It is quite interesting. And uh, I'm not sure you're seeing all the slides. Uh, you can throw the slides. I don't look as good as my slides. You can throw my, my, my slides up there. Uh, please, okay. Uh, the, I'm still up there. Sorry about that. It's, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not going to work. The whole thing is I just kept looking at me. I'm good. Okay. Now, I, I want to start by thinking about this because in, in education, today we kept talking about global competence or global competitiveness. That's what's driving all of us in education. It's that I'm still waiting for my slides. Do you think it's going to come up here? You're trying. Okay, we tried before. No worry about it. I'm just joking about it. I can talk without slides, by the way. This, that's uh, supposed to be. We talk about, I think, I know in Colorado and in the U.S., we've been going through a lot of, lot of major reform efforts. And do you remember No Child Left Behind? Do you remember that time? Uh, no Child Left Behind is very personal to me. It cost me money. So um, I, have, I, mean, I hold a grudge against it. It's, uh, because uh, my son was in, happened in a public school in Michigan. When no child of behind came, delivered so much damage, I had to take him out and send him to private school. That cost me money. That's, you know, George owes me a lot. That's George Bush. And, uh, so, and now we have, uh, we have um, uh, this thing called uh, uh, Race to the Top. And uh, Race to the Top is another thing that's uh, very similar to, uh, honestly, in terms of... Uh, uh, its efforts, it's very similar to... We had signal and then it became unplugged, so it just needs to be plugged in. Oh, it's plugged in again. Sorry. Okay, try it again. I'm sorry about this. This is uh, the beauty of technology. I thought weather was unpredictable. Now technology is as well. Uh, and anyway, so, so but then you have no, the race to the top. Now we talk about the common core. I think America, in our drive, trying to, trying to become better than others, is actually leading us to a very much suicidal path. That's my own assessment. I grew up in China. I have uh, lived in China for many years before I came to the US. My two kids uh, grew up uh, in the US. This is uh, just to show you that I actually have children. That's my daughter. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, deeply concerned about her education. She is uh, 15, she's going to be a senior. As Chinese, she skipped a grade. That's required for all Chinese kids. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, the, when I came, to, I, I, I came here when I was 27, so I, I taught in China, I, I've been teaching the U.S. in different places. When I look at, um, I examine where every civilization can go, I go back to history. So I look at, um, this is what caused the downfall of China, okay? This is the stereotype, the mindset of the Chinese, the traditional Chinese, this is how the Chinese used to think they got everything right. So they believe we, they got a perfect system, we don't have to change. Then until the industrial revolution come about along, innovation comes and destroy the old empire. That's what happened to China because it ignored what happens around itself. And this is going to perhaps cause the downfall of America. You know? And <laughs> We think, you know, that's, that's what uh, the... <laughs> America's idea that, uh, that we are, indeed, the, uh, the land of awesome. This idea of trying to keep us the awesomest place is actually destroying America right now. Because in the U.S., we have somehow think we are awesome in everything except in education. 
In education, we've been admiring other countries, normally authoritarian countries for a long time. You know, today, we kept talking about ourselves, that our education is getting worse, uh, it's in decline. So, but my question is this, why is America still here? The, the Canadians want to know, you know, of course, you know, but, 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 but beyond that, there's some other reasons. That's, why is America still here? Because, you know, you hear this data. I know uh, Mark Tucker came in town, all those kind of things. They talk about American education is in decline, it's getting worse, but I can tell you American education is not in decline, it's not getting worse, it has always been horrible. It's been bad for a long time. It's been bad for a long time, according to media report. 1957, when Sputnik was shot up, American education was worse than the Soviet Union. 1958, cover of Life magazine shows that American education was much worse than the Soviet Union. We should learn from the Soviets. But didn't last very long. Then we have this test coming up. America has a long history of bad test takers. 1964, the first international mathematics study showed Americans' 12th graders ranked 12th out of 12 countries. No, that's pretty bad. And uh, we've never, if we're talking about we had a good day, we never had a good old day. American education test scores have never, never ranked high, and it will never rank high in the future. So this is business to all the international tests which shows the same thing. But ironically or miraculously, this country is still here, and not only here, according to Obama, America still has the largest, most prosperous economy in the world. This is actually true, you can applaud. <laughs> this is true, it's factual, well, at least more factual than some of his other facts. <laughs> I can assure you, this is actually real. And so how did it happen? So how do you explain this? That this is a very simple thing, right? It's very simple. So what I've been trying to find out, we have been misled by the wrong indicator. We call the land of awesome, try to protect us. We don't understand what's going on in other places. China's downfall was trying to ignore others. America's downfall might be what too sensitive to indicators that do not matter. That do not matter. So what are the indicators that might matter? Let's think about education. What makes a good education? Education is not the same at different times. Education is different. And we have followed the traditional education model. This is the old education paradigm that everybody follows. We try to become. We try to homogenize everybody, our students. I know we got two great students here. You are some of the and the product, the best homogenization, you showed great, great power to do things we like. Do you see what I mean? That's called homogenization. You start with the outcome, employable skills. That's what we'll talk about. Today, you will have this common core. We think it's college and career readiness. We kept talking about this. But I kept asking, we're ready for what college? Harvard, Penn, UC Boulder, Community college, all ready for what career? Playing for the Bronx? Or going to do a musician? Or maybe open a pub? Or what kind of career? We don't know. Do you see what? But that's traditionally we could. This is how we traditionally do. We describe a set of curriculum. When you prescribe those employable skills, you are pretty sure those skills are valuable, are useful. And schools are driven to produce that. If we cannot produce that, it's a horrible school. Okay, and once you produce that well, you have great test scores. You have great test scores. That's how you do homogenize this, this whole thing. All the Asian countries are very good at doing this thing. So this is what I call the sausage making model. Okay, a sausage making model is not bad if our society needs sausage. It's not a bad idea. You know, there are certain times we love sausages, right? But it only becomes a problem when sausages is no longer valuable. And this model is great because for the last several hundred years, actually 150 years, since the Industrial Revolution, we, we as a society, as a school, produced lots of people with similar skills to work on jobs created by a few people. 
like think about Henry Ford. So, so this is for the employee-oriented education model. We want our children to meet certain expectations, to master certain skills. We as a society, as a school, judge the value of talents. That's basically what we do. And so this was very beautiful, powerful. And America tried to be as good a sausage maker as possible, but not as successful as the Asians. That's how it happens. So America, in essence, survived because it is a, a broken sausage maker that made some bacon. <laughs> Our traditional virtues of American education, traditional virtues of American education is that we have public funding, public provision. Both can be problematic if you want to be a sausage maker because they are locally controlled, they are very diverse, also, we have a very sloppy system. We are very forgiving. We give you many second chances. All of this was produced American's workforce and allowed people like Steve Jobs to survive. That's how it, American schools so far do not teach creativity any better than Asian systems. They just kill it less successfully. That, that's, that's what we, we do. We don't care as successful. So now, all these reforms from No Child Behind to accountability to the Common Core is trying to fix this model to be as effective, as obsolete as the Asian system, even the Finnish system. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to become the best sausage maker when in the future we are going to need something else. Because we've seen some massive changes in society. And this change is, I'm going to remind all of us, America faces now a big challenge. In the future, the working class is declining. We have too many of our students today are not finding jobs. College readiness and career readiness does not guarantee my definition of good education. My definition of a good education is that can you keep other people's children out of their basement? <laughs> it's out of basement readiness, you know. That's what independence is that. Now, are you out of basement readiness? That means today we have to lose hope. There will be no jobs in this country because they are going to be replaced by machines. Look at this. They're gone. All outsourced to other countries. For us, for America to survive in the future, we need creative people. We need entrepreneurs who create jobs. We need people who understand globally what it matters. And as a nation, America now has the resources to do it. You know, even if we produce the same test scores as China, as Korea, as Japan, we will have lost. Because this country can only global benchmark to the best of the past. If you want the best of the future, we have to invent it. If the U.S. was interested in global benchmarking in 1776, this country would have benchmarked to China. China was the largest economy in 1776. All would have benchmarked to England. It took the courage to invent this one. So America's education, if you look at all this kind of data set, what does it mean all these things? I just want to show you another piece, how we as a broken sausage maker made some bacon. It's kind of fascinating to look at some other data. And I was looking at uh, the, um, for example, this is the data shows entrepreneurship confidence. You look at America compared to China, you know, we may not be very good at taking tests, but we are very confident at our abilities. So somehow, some way, we kept that kind of, uh, kept that confidence. Confidence drives creativity and entrepreneurship just to wrap up. I saw that sign. I'm going to wrap up. Okay. Uh, the future of education has to be three things. Creative, which schools doesn't do very well. Entrepreneurial and capitalize on the strength of every child. So education cannot continue to fix people, fix people's deficit, but we have to enhance everyone's strength personalized education, not national curriculum, not state curriculum, but personalized curriculum. Thank you.